We're here at the Blonde 2.0 offices in Tel Aviv, Israel. We're seeing all sorts of different Israeli companies at different stages, mostly tech companies. Here we're seeing Maori Media, which is uh, uh, helping content producers uh, monetize and do a new kind of advertising. Um, and they're about to go public, so we're seeing them at a different stage than usually we see uh, companies at. We're going to find out what's going on in the advertising world in Israel right now. Who are you? So I'm Maya Shiran. Uh, I founded uh, Mary Media when I was 26 years old. Uh, and ever since then, we've been working uh, and very passionate about the innovation and our ability to grow the business and help uh, publishers, website owners out there uh, make as much revenue as possible from their uh, website and their content. So it's been a, an amazing ride so far. Very happy, especially to be able to work with such a, uh, such a talented team and uh, grow some very, very uh, interesting people. Tell, tell me what the company does, because most people probably haven't heard of it. Right. So um, the company Mary Media uh, actually uh, helps uh, uh, publishers or website owners generate uh, as much revenue as possible. We've built a technology that actually um, has built sort of like a, a bid system or an auction, which, is, which acts very similar to a stock exchange in which we take a look at the demand that's out there in terms of advertisers and who is willing to be the highest bidder for each given ad impression. And all of this is done in the millisecond, uh, so decisions are made at every single moment for every single page impression. Wow. And we've taken this huge uh, technology that we've developed for, uh, for medium size and big size uh, website owners and uh, actually built a self-serve platform called Kadabra. Which, is, which actually gives, gives access to the same technology and the same ad coverage that somebody like a, a very big uh, website owner would have and gives the same access to a small or a smaller uh, website or blog or uh, somebody writing very high quality content and looking to monetize uh, and increase revenue on that ad space. Yeah. Um, you now are about 100 employees, right? Right. And uh, you've been profitable from day one. Right? Yeah, that, that's that's right. not traditional in the tech industry yeah, to, to yeah. be always profitable. Yeah, it's actually quite a nice story. We were, we started off, I was 26, uh, my partner was 27 or something like that. Uh, we started off uh, and we didn't have any external investors uh, and we didn't have any money of our own either. So uh, it was very important to start making a profit really quickly or else go back to looking for a job, which we did not want to do. Uh, and so we actually became profitable after two weeks. Uh, it was a small profit, but it allowed us to start growing the business and making sure that we're, uh, you know, with our feet on the ground and growing something solid and, and good and, and also that brings value to the whole, uh, you know, digital media space that we were in. I heard you, you didn't even have the money to buy two computers right. in the early days, so you shared a computer? <laughs> yeah, we started off with one computer, we shared it, and then Ariel at one point said, okay, I can't do this anymore, let's get another computer. And we, we, then we had a second, well, yeah, we had a second computer. And, and that's how everything really started. In the beginning, we were doing mostly affiliate stuff until we really understood what our value to the industry was. Yeah. Um, back then, advertisers looking for ROI were used to working mainly through uh, channels like search engines, you know, SEO, SEM. So we brought the whole display idea into ROI advertising and performance advertising, which back then wasn't very popular. There weren't many companies doing uh, display advertising with the purpose of achieving ROI goals or performance metrics. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very big deal and people started hearing about us and, and it was, you know, everybody wanted to get a piece of that because as you probably know, I mean, display advertising is so big in terms of the volume that you can get uh, access to. Yeah. So why why do advertising? I, uh, you know, I've had lunch with you now and uh, you're obviously could do anything <laughs> in life. So. <laughs> Why, why pick that uh, why as, a, as a company to start? Well, I fell in love with this industry simply because I understood that, first of all, it's so open and there are so many things going on and such big opportunities in terms of things that you can innovate and do. Um, and in reality, this specific space, uh, for me, what I love most about it is the fact that it's so measurable. You can really measure and understand. It's no, you don't have to guess where the, the advertising campaign will work best. You don't have to guess who's the best partner for you. You can simply measure it. And then once you can measure it, it's a real win-win for the advertiser 
they can measure what the return they're making, what is the return that they're actually making, and they can decide to invest more and more according to that actual return, rather than say, you know, TV is good for me, or uh, internet is good for me, or I want to be in digital uh, media. That doesn't make any sense unless you're able to really measure what your return is, and that's what we've been able to achieve. And for me, that's that's amazing because at the advertise we've seen businesses that work with us grow from really small businesses to really big businesses because we've become a sales channel rather than just a marketing channel and and that's something really really big in in this whole evolution of the space yeah you uh, you have a unique corporate culture and where did that come from well actually uh, you know we when we first started out uh, one of the things that was extremely important for me as I looked towards building a, you know, a business or a company. Uh, I felt that freedom was something that was very, very central to the whole doing of, especially in the internet, that so many possibilities exist. And, and so we built a company culture around that, that premise that people need freedom to create and to innovate. And the only thing you have to do if that's what you decide is to bring intelligent and creative people. And that, those people are actually, once you give them freedom, Miracles can happen because you, they just take it to, to amazing places. You told me you arrived there by making a lot of mistakes. Right. Uh, tell yeah. me what you learned. From <laughs> we the made mistakes. a lot of mistakes in the beginning. Uh, well, you know, I was very young when we started off, so I had no, almost no managerial experience. Um, we we had we actually recruited a few people who we thought were big shots and really big deal, and 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 slowly we understood that that. In reality, what makes a good person in your company is the fact that they're very committed and energetic. energetic. And you know, if they're smart and, and again, as I said before, in, innovative and creative, that's much more important than if they have the right CV or went to the right you know school or something of, along those lines. You really want to get people who are passionate about what it is that the company is doing and, and very committed to the team and to the culture and, and that together with the technology that we've built and the ad coverage that we have and are connected to has just uh, been amazing and, and totally proven itself. Yeah, I liked your approach that you wrote down what mistakes you made and learned from them. Yeah. That, that's a, I think still unique in co corporate world. We don't like to uh, <laughs> think over our mistakes too much. Yeah, right? it's true. I think it was more uh, because of our uh, lack of confidence that we simply made those mistakes and we thought that was, you know, we thought nobody made managerial mistakes. We thought we were the only ones that made managerial mistakes. So we said, okay, let's write these down so that we never have to repeat them again. And we wrote them down and, and that was really a very important learning experience. Also now, because we still make mistakes and we still need to be aware. And, and I think many of the starts, startups out there, if they were sensitive to the feedback that they get from the world and, and from the environment, you know, things would progress very quickly and very well because at the end of the day the answers are around you not inside you you need to be sensitive to what's going on in order to be able to learn from that and and be better the world since you started your company has really switched to mobile and soon we're seeing a switch to wearable computers you know like right. watches and glasses and stuff how do you think that's going to change your business well, actually, we've already gone mobile in terms of our uh, technological solution, and we're investing more and more, uh, including recruiting very um, sophisticated engineers that will continue to develop that. And we've got a few companies that we're looking at also in terms of that are doing some very interesting mobile technology uh, that we think uh, can be a, an excellent addition to our to our business and the way we do things. Yeah. What is driving your business forward? What, what are the trends that you're seeing happen in the marketplace? So one of the things that we have done uh, about a year ago, we launched, uh, or a little more than a year ago, we launched Kadabra, uh, which is the self-serve platform for uh, smaller or medium-sized um, publishers or website owners. And that has shown an incredible growth. Uh, we see that people are very, very happy about the platform, very positive about it. Users are signing in uh, a few hundreds a day, uh, and that's been extremely nice in terms of both in terms of the growth of our business, but also in terms of the value that we can really feel that we can really add some value to to these players. Because for you know for somebody blogging to have access to the same technology and the same ad coverage as would a bigger player 
it's something really big and, and I mean no wonder there's such good hype around this uh, this platform um, yeah. and we've also made sure that it's extremely user friendly so everything together um, I'm, I'm very excited about it yeah. about this platform uh, one last question what is it like being here in Tel Aviv and, and uh, it, obviously you can build a business here yeah um, why what's going on here because there's so many what's interesting happening? companies that we're seeing here yeah uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not objective. I love Israel. I love Tel Aviv. I love being here. I would never change it for anything. Um, but I think it's a cultural thing. I mean, there's so much, there's so much incentive in terms of, you know, socially to, to do things and to think differently and to think out of the box that I think that's one of the main factors. And, and that's why you see so many startups uh, going on here and people having ideas all the time and even inside the company we've had people go out and do their own thing and we've also had people inside the company innovate and take on themselves projects that you know people who maybe finished the university one or two years ago can be leading projects and doing uh, their own thing inside the company so there's a very big um, incentive socially speaking culturally speaking around the, the innovation and being being your own person and doing your own thing so yeah. so it's a, it makes me very proud to be an Israeli but but I think a lot of people get to enjoy it too so yeah where do we learn more about your company you can go to the to Mary Media's website or the Facebook page marymedia.net and of course Kadabra uh, an incredible uh, user interface and very good uh, platform thank you so much for coming thank in. you Thanks. <laughs>